today it's all about that hemi well kind of i had the inner and outer tie rod ends replaced so you can see the wheels not sitting right let me get this out of the garage and you'll see it's uh pretty funny All right. Oh, warmer weather makes engine happy. Good. Give it a few seconds to warm up. <clears throat> anyway, so a quick tour. Um, this is a 1981. Uh, Plymouth Reliant station wagon. It's got that vinyl bench seat uh, The trim level is called custom. I Made a video about adding the mirror. I still need that little Piece for the inside which I, I'll get there. He'll get there um, The headliner fabric was disgusting disintegrating falling so I removed it for now The underlying board is still in good shape, which is nice It's got 94,835 miles on it, which are original, believe it or not. <clears throat> no rear defrost or rear wiper, but it does have cruise, which works, tilt, intermittent wipers for the front, AC, which is broken, of course, AM, FM, single speaker radio, which is comical, the uh, coronameter digital clock, and it has the rear electric hatch release, which is super nice. And a lighted glove box. And a lighted keyway. So, a very oddly equipped uh, first year uh, K Wagon. Oh, and it, of course, it's got the Hemi folks, which is the funniest thing because uh, the motor put in these. The optional one was a 2.6 liter, and because Chrysler owns the word Hemi, or the rights to use it, the hemispherical motor is actually a Mitsubishi, which, <laughs> this car is such an interesting uh, <clears throat> contradiction of things. Um, anyway, you can see here, it's got this uh, logo in the steering wheel, which is the old Plymouth logo. Only the 81 <clears throat> Reliance had that. Uh, at the 82 and up, it went to the regular uh, Pentastar logo. And uh, as you can see up front there, I added the early 81 special Plymouth uh, hood ornament to it. It had the regular star, but I mean, come on, it's an 81. It's got to have the special one, so. All right, let's see if it'll stay running on its own yet. Oh, look at that. All right, good. So let's get it outside. For a second, it's a tight fit here. And right now, the steering is all over the place, fucking terrible. As you can see, the steering just wants to go whatever way it wants to go. So, we're gonna make the car angry, turn it around for the tow truck driver so his job is easier. Parking on the street for him, actually. Or, actually, no, he said to have it in the driveway. Oh, you can hear that happy noise. Jesus Christ. 
All right. <clears throat> so, anyway, let's let me go show you what's going on. <clears throat> so, I had the tie rod ends replaced because they were original. Very, very loose. Very unhappy. If you look now, and I also replaced the struts a while ago, which also threw it off more. But notice how that wheel's like that, right? Oh. Oh no. That one's definitely not pointing the same way. <laughs> the, the place I had to do the tie rod ends definitely did not eyeball the alignment very well. I don't know if you can see it because the damn sun, but uh, the one wheel's pointing to the left, the other one's definitely pointing to the right. I drove it home like this about two or three miles. The thing was just screeching the whole time. But on the plus side, the new tie rod ends aren't loose. Uh, you can't see them from this angle. Let me switch. Ugh. Look, new parts. Yay! So both sides got new ones. And, uh... Yeah, they'll get it all adjusted at uh, Firestone, that's where it's going. And, uh, should be good. <clears throat> then I'll finally be able to drive this thing without it going all over the road, either from bad parts or bad alignment. <clears throat> so we'll do a quick tour of the outside. It needs to go get a bath again. See here the earlier grill. This sweet bug guard. Early logo. The hood, unfortunately, has faded some and we weren't able to really get that out. We'll try again. <clears throat> got a weird blue mark on that. I don't know if I got it. The trim is still in pretty reasonable shape. says Reliant there, Hammy. <clears throat> you see some of the weird little rust bubbles on the door, on the side. I don't know how or why, but uh, they're there. Although, but, I mean, the door, bottom of the door is solid. It's just some, yeah, whatever. It's 40 years old. <clears throat> this door is in pretty good shape. The rear quarters are decent. Here's the back. It's got this cool air deflector on it, which I think is neat. So it's almost like a spoiler. Yeah, that didn't help. <laughs> <clears throat> See here on the early ones, on the 81s, it says front wheel drive with the big K. There was this shitty hitch we took off, but unfortunately the bumper cover is damaged from it, but whatever looks better than the rusty thing sticking out. <clears throat> got a vintage uh, direct connection plate frame on there, which I thought was kind of neat. Uh, if you haven't seen this channel, Neutral Drop, these guys are in New York. They're hilarious. They scrap cars that are <clears throat> not fit for New York streets anymore because their inspections there are nuts. So... Stuff that still runs and drives fine will be worth money in other parts of the country. There, it's worthless. It's scrap metal. So, they get all these cars that still run and drive, but they just have some sort of problem and they destroy them. It's pretty fun. <clears throat> so, here's the passenger side. It's in pretty good shape. I got to plug these little holes from a aftermarket mirror that was on here which was a piece of shit. We've got a factory one now which I installed it looks way better. <clears throat> Alloy wheels which didn't come on it originally. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm 
show you the back real quick. More vinyl bench. <clears throat> Here's a weird 81 only uh, door panel. See, it's got the locks from like an Omni and a door handle from an Omni. And then uh, the 81s and early 82s had this, but it has a vent window here, but there's no window to roll down, just flat. <clears throat> so yeah, it's, uh, it's a cool old car. It's uh, be going on the tow truck soon enough. And there it is, folks. Mitsubishi 2.6 and shadow. Mitsubishi 2.6 MCA jet. Dang old. Hear me, boy. Oh, yeah. I need to take things apart on this, clean them up, make them look nicer. But uh, for how neglected this car has been, it's crazy how well it runs. It runs pretty good. I replaced that cam seal over there not too long ago. It looks nice and dry under there now. There's leaking oil from there real bad. <clears throat> That's actually the water pump there. I had to replace that because it was seized. No air filter for God knows how many years. It has one now. <clears throat> new little battery, new struts. New washer tank, new wiper linkages, a new bulb for the hood lamp, <clears throat> new fuel filter, new coil. The coil mount was missing. I got that from a, a dude up in, uh, I think, Pennsylvania. I can't remember his name right now, uh, but he has a he has one of my old cars actually. So. The carburetor needs to be redone because the choke doesn't work right. That's for Choke disabled. But, uh, yeah, it's a cool car. And there's the Easter Bunny. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bye. Here's the cargo area. <laughs> it's a lot of parts. A lot of them are for this car. Um, some of them are not, but most of them are or extra tune-up pieces, like I got a bunch of air filters in here, and this stuff's not for this car, but a lot of it is. <clears throat> so yeah. <laughs> Here's the carburetor rebuild kit. Uh, a guy named the Duke who has one of these is going to uh, rebuild the carburetor on it eventually, so that way the choke will be working. And uh, there's the tow truck. All right. There it goes. Oh, yeah. Copyright infringement music. Turn that off. There we go. There's a sight you don't see very often anymore. An old K car going to get serviced. Usually if they're on a tow truck at this point, it's to go to the crusher in the commie state of California. Because there's someone there named Guy. Who's Guy? Crush them all. Crush them all.